the knife is a Spyderco Endura 4 knife center exclusive in half 40 steel and pack of wood handle scales when I first saw that this was coming out uh, I didn't immediately want to jump on it I was actually going to let it pass by the pictures that the knife center was using didn't do it a whole lot of justice uh, guys in the group started getting it and I was seeing the pictures that they were posting and that's really what changed my mind about it I ordered the knife came in from knife center there was no problem um, I wasn't sure how the scales were going to be and I wasn't sure how the ergos were going to be the wood scales they feel good they're I'm not going to say that they feel completely finished they don't you know it, it definitely has a wood feel to it but right just holding it in hand just knife in hand the uh it feels like spider did a good job with it it does have uh, full steel liners and a full steel backing on it this full steel backing really grabbed my attention as well uh, made me think of a, an endura in g10 or a g10 stretch and i really like that uh, it does have a very solid feeling lock. The blade is half 40, but it's laminated between SUS 410 on either side. My own personal preference with a laminated blade is that there's a lot of space between the lamination line and the edge of the knife. I don't like it if the lamination line comes too close to the edge. And that's something that's really hit or miss with a laminated blade, at least historically from Spyderco. You, know, you can have some variation there. So in ordering this knife I called Knife Center and I asked them to open up the box and inspect the knife for that you know I said take a look at it make sure and they said that's fine and that's not the first time that I've asked a a knife retailer to do that I mean there's been several other places and they usually don't have a problem with it and that's that's one of the reasons that I deal with places like Knife Center and Blade HQ and KnifeWorks because they they really specialize in the product if you're dealing with somebody like Amazon, you're not going to get that same response. And even if they tell you that they're going to do it, even if they try and do it, they they really don't know what they're talking about. They're they're not specializing in knives. Um, places like like I said, like Knife Works, Blade HQ, Knife Center, um, uh, Rivers Edge Cutlery, Sooner State Knives. These are places really that specialize in these products, and I, I really prefer to give support to that community when I'm buying knives. Um, so the lamination lines look good on it. I'm, I'm happy with it. After getting it, before sharpening it, the edge that was on it from Spyderco was a good edge. There was no complaints there. Uh, I wanted to do testing on the ergonomics of the knife. I worked with several different mediums. I started on a wooden dowel, worked with that a little bit. Um, I cut zip ties a little bit, and that was the zip ties were were just as much to test the edge to see if there was any weakness in it. Um, that was fine, there was no issue. I moved on to rope, working with 5 8 inch manila rope. I worked with the rope, the knife did fine, the ergos were doing fine. It would have done better if uh, if it had been freshly sharpened for it, but it, you know, it still did okay. And then I moved on to cutting cardboard. The Endura 4 does great on cardboard. The, the knife is a, a really, really good slicer. It's really made well for that. And the ergonomics on the knife did just fine. There was no issue with it. The Spyderco contoured the, the wood really well. It really came out good. While going through the ergonomics testing, I, I, I was messing around with uh, keeping the clip and tip up or tip down. A lot of guys in the knife community simply carry tip up. I don't. Uh, it's not. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but it's not a guarantee with me, uh, especially with this kind of a model, especially with a, a, a back lock. I was expecting to carry the knife tip down and to prefer it that way, but I ended up preferring tip up in this case. Um, something I, I did notice is that given the, the smoothness of the wood, the knife does go in and out of pocket very easily. It doesn't have the same resistance that the FRN models have, but I don't think it'll be a problem. I don't think I'm going to have a problem with losing the knife. I like the way carrying this tip up that it looks with the full steel backing sticking out of my pocket um, don't know why I prefer it but it's I just do I noticed it I like that um, something that I did notice was that there was some there were some rough edges on the knife the uh, the edge inside the scales and inside the hole was was a little bit sharp 
I needed to smooth that out. What I always use for that is a ceramic rod. I'll just use a rod from the Spyderco Sharp Maker. Just work with the medium rod. Uh, different people have different ways of going about it. I hear about people using sandpaper and that kind of thing. But for me, a ceramic rod seems to do just fine. Just using the corner of the Sharp Maker rod running over the edges. Uh, you only need a few passes and you don't need a whole lot of pressure. I mean, certainly nothing beyond medium pressure. Um, working over the edges of the scales and then working your way around inside the hole. I never find these edges really too sharp. I, I hear people say, you know, talk about being worried about cutting themselves on them and I've never even broken this, my skin. I've never even broken the top layers of skin on them. But it's fast, it's easy. I mean, it takes 60 seconds and you take care of the edges with a ceramic rod. And doing it that way with a ceramic rod, with a ceramic rod is what's called breaking the edges. It's fast, it's easy, and then you're done with it. So after all that was done, and the cutting was done, and I had broken the edges on the knife that I, that I wanted to smooth out, I needed to sharpen the knife. Hap 40 is has a decent amount of carbide in it. Um, you're looking at about 1.3 carbon, 4 chromium, 6% tungsten, 3% vanadium, 5% moly, 8% cobalt. Um, Looking simply looking at the composition, I would almost think that aluminum stones would be okay. I've sharpened half 40 with aluminum stones in the past. In fact, I did a YouTube video where I sharpened a uh, half 40 knife with aluminum stones, and at the end of it, I brought the edge up to hair whittling. And when I did that video, I you know, I did the video and the knife came up hair whittling. I felt the edge and I thought, okay, well, it's good, then I'll move on from it. And the next time that I sharpened that knife, I used diamond and ceramic, and the difference that I got in the edge was major. It was really uh, a big difference, and I, you know, I really, I don't want to take that video down off YouTube, but at the same time, I almost don't like having it up because I feel like it's misleading. I really think that using diamond and ceramic is a better way to go with HAP40, um, and it really, it. it what you're talking about it affecting is the really high levels of sharpness towards the end of sharpening. You can grind a knife with that much vanadium on aluminum stones and it'll get sharper than it was, but when you're really talking about those high levels of sharpness, that's where you run into a problem with uh, with aluminum stones. But for what I, you know, maybe it's the, the high Rockwell or the fact that there's, you know, 6% tungsten in there as well. But HAP40, in my experience, really does do better using diamond and ceramic. So. In sharpening this knife, I started with uh, started with diamond, and I was using it wet. I started with a coarse, worked my way down to fine, extra fine, and extra extra fine. Then moved on to a sweater co ultra fine stone, and I wanted to bring this edge up a little bit finer uh, than I have in the past. And, you know, this this edge in half forty, I wanted to make it a little bit finer, so I, I went ahead and did three rotations on the sweater co ultra fine stone. Hap 40 and and seems like uh, high carbide, low chromium steels in general. Uh, you can have a really temperamental burr with the steel. Um, I've noticed it with M4. I've noticed it with 10V and K390, where you've got a, a really high carbide content and or a fairly low chromium content. I did run into that with this sharpening, and I, I did some work on the ultra fine stone to weaken the burr to beat up on it. Uh, when I moved on the strops, I started with a 5 micron strop, and that was why I started with a 5 micron strop. I wanted something, uh, an abrasive in the strop, large enough to really contend with the burr from the knife. Uh, I started using a, uh, a 5 micron compound from Wicked Edge, and the, the strop loaded, and I was kind of at a standstill, so I moved on to a second, a second five micron strop using Timo, uh, Timo's five micron diamond compound. I didn't use Timo. I didn't move on to Timo because it's more effective than Wicked Edge. I just ran out of compound from Wicked Edge. So over the course of those two five micron strops, I took the burr completely off the knife, and then moved on to a 3.5 from Timo. I worked with that, and at the end of that 3.5, the knife was beginning to whittle hair. It was struggling to do it, but it was beginning to whittle hair. 
I continued on. I mean, I had a I had a preconceived idea of how far I was going to take the blade before I even started sharpening. So I continued on and moved from a 3.5 to a 1 micron diamond spray. All the straps that I used were wood straps. It's been a while since I've made leather straps. I need to get around to it. But I moved on to a 1 micron, then a half micron, and a quarter micron, and moved on to a 0 0.05 micron. 0 0.025 micron and a 0 0.005 micron. So that 0 0.005 micron is is a 3.2 million grit strop. Um, the edge came up extremely sharp. It's still what I would consider a coarse edge, which some people don't quite get. They don't understand if I'm if I'm taking it down through an ultra fine stone and then this far down through the strops, how can I how can I call this a coarse finish? Um, the reason behind that is if you look at it, there's clearly a scratch pattern there. It's not mirrored. It's not polished. I'm, I'm simply starting with a coarse, coarse finish and then reducing it down as much as I can without losing the bite on the edge of the knife. Uh, the fact that I can look at it with my naked eye and clearly see a scratch pattern and no reflection on it is why I say it's a coarse finish. After the sharpening was done, the edge was extremely sharp. It was hair whittling sharp. In fact, it was almost so sharp that it didn't want to whittle hairs. It just it just wanted to blow through them. It was giving me difficulty to get decent footage of me whittling the hair. But certainly no complaints out of it. Uh, absolutely the way that I wanted it. Um, and then after finishing the sharpening, before recording this, I carried the knife for a week and you know, no complaints out of it. The ergos hold up very good. The knife carries very well. The edge is held up very well. I mean, in fact, a week later, without stropping or anything else, it's still got enough bite on it that I can, you know, just touch it and feel it catching into the skin. So, really good model from Spider Co. I'm really pleased with Hap 40. Um, it's interesting, there's more steels in that line from Hitachi. I mean, there's also HAP 50 and HAP 72, um, which are similar to HAP 40, but pushing it farther with carbide content. HAP 50 is 1.5 to, or 1.54 to 1.64 carbon, um, up to 4.7 chromium. The tungsten in HAP 50 goes up to 8.5%, you know, 7.5 to 8.5. The Molly is 5.5 to 6.5. The vanadium is 3.8 to 4.3. And the, the cobalt goes up to 8.5%. Um, and then HAP 72 almost almost reminds me of Maximet. I mean, it's it's 2 to 2.3 carbon. Uh, chromium is the same as HAP 50. The tungsten is up to 10%. The vanadium is up to 5% or a little over 5%. The, the cobalt goes up to 10%. The molly is up around 8.5%. So those are interesting steels and they're interesting options. We haven't seen them from Spyderco yet. Um, I understand why Spyderco is using HAP40. I mean, Hitachi even says that HAP40 gives the best balance of edge holding and uh, toughness and sharpenability of the steels in that line. Um, and I'm certainly happy with HAP40. I mean, HAP40 almost reminds me of M4 in the way that it sharpens and its performance. But I think that HAP50 would be an interesting option. Um, I'd be interested in HAP50 on an Endura. I think that would be a really good choice. And HAP72 might be pushing it. Maybe HAP72 on a Delica. I mean, Delica is such a dedicated slicer. Some people carry it as a regular EDC. But to me, in my eyes, the thinness of the blade and everything... It, it just, Delica seems like a dedicated slicer with really good ergonomics. So it would be interesting to see those steels come out, to see them used. That's almost something that I'm waiting for. But like I said, I'm really happy with HAP40. I think that Spyderco did a good job executing this, this exclusive for Knife Center. And I was glad to see that Knife Center put it out.